Hey, it's Nash from Astronomy. In the previous processing video, I went over how to pre-process and stack M45 from a data set that I collected from last uh, October, October 2022. I thought it would be cool to see how I do this in AstroPixel Processor. I've been using AstroPixel Processor for about a year and a half now, and they recently released uh, version 2.0.0 beta 17, which you can download from their website. So that's what I'll use to process the exact same data set, and we can do a comparison of what they look like between the two uh, to stacking applications. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to make sure you do is that you have a working directory. So I created a new one, you know, it's called 102922M45 because that's the date uh, I took the images, not the date that I'm processing them. So before we start loading things in, I'm going to uncheck these boxes here, so multi-channel and multi-session because this is a single session and a single single channel that we are working on, not, no multi uh, no multi-channel. So we'll go to the zeroth tab first and under pattern, we will change it from supported to RGGB. If you're using DSLR, and if you watched my last processing video on AstroPixel processor for M M31, I used supported because I used a DSLR. And we'll keep the algorithm as adaptive area disk. The other algorithms are for dual narrowband and narrowband. So we'll just keep it at adaptive area disk. We'll click on four spare X trans CFA so that it does colorize the, uh, the pixels properly. So now we'll go into load. So I'll find my lights. I have my lights in this directory here. So I have 28 of these. So I'll click open. And then I'll add my flats. It's called M31 because M31 is the last thing I shot. So just asked where you just titled them. So I added my darks and biases as well. In the panel at the bottom, you can see all of the frames that I added. You can randomly open a random light and see what it looks like. So I have a blue hue because that's how my Astroberry um, images it. So I, need to, I do need to change that at some point. So this is what it looks like. So in my previous M31 video, I went over all of these various tabs here just to go over what they are even though we didn't use them. So in this video, we're going to skip all of that. You can come straight to 6 integrate and just click on integrate and AstroPixel processor will go through all of those options with the default settings without any changes. Uh, if you do make changes, it'll apply those changes as well. So, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I think this is a lot faster than even using Cyrillic. Um, just load them in and click integrate as the very simplest uh, method. So let's click on integrate and then we will skip forward to the end and I'll name this as M45. Okay, so this is done. Uh, AstroPixel processor has also gotten a lot faster um, over the past couple of months. And you can see that this looks pretty, pretty good. And if you compare it to what we had in Cyrillic, it looks like this. It's not too far off. Uh, there we go. There we go. So I'm gonna try and do a couple of things. So first, we're gonna go to tools. We're gonna do batch crop so that the rest of our post-processing happens in a cropped setting because there are some stacking artifacts around the side. So we'll do crop, it's M45 crop, press OK. And if it doesn't automatically open up, just expand your uh, list of files and then you'll find it there. So there's crop. So next, what we'll do is we will rotate it so that it looks a, looks a little bit more natural, just like Cyril had it. So you just do flip Y, easy peasy. And then if we look at what we have looks very similar. So, okay, we'll do rotate, resize, add all of this, and for some reason I can't change this title. And then we have to open that again. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we're going to next remove light pollution to remove a lot of the haze around and one good thing about AstroPixel processor is that it doesn't really care if you hover over stars, it'll figure it out. So just make a bunch of boxes, click recalculate, and there you go. So it removed a lot of the light pollution here. So it looks really good. You can see more nebulosity around, uh, around the, the nebula and the cluster here. So OK, save. I can change that, so I'm going to Let's do crop CBG, sure. Okay. Just open that up again just to make sure it's in the latest file. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to calibrate star colors. 
So one thing that I wish Astro Pixel Processor had that Serial already does, and I believe this also exists in, in PixInsight, is photometric color calibration, uh, where it does a plate solve and it uses the object information, what it knows about that object in the sky, and then calibrates the star colors. So in Astro Pixel Processor, you kind of have to do it manually by selecting a bunch of stars. So I'm just going to do that. And then uh, it has three kinds of calibration modes, balance, RGB, black body, and extinction, and adaptive black body. So this is the latest uh, algorithm that they developed. You can, you can just do a basic RGB balance. We can see what that looks like. But I'll probably go back to the adaptive. All right. So, you know, this doesn't look pretty bad. You know, it makes the colors a little bit more natural. Uh, it does look like the RGB is balanced. But I'll go back to adaptive body, click recalculate. That doesn't look very different, but if you look at the the graphs here, it, it looks looks pretty good. But I can move it towards the red, just like ten percent. Recalculate because we do expect to see more red stars in space. And I think that looks a little bit better. We can see more reddish, orangish, and we can make those pop uh, in a later step. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this. So I'll just do OK and save. And then CSC for calibrate star color. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the HSL tool. So this is the hue, saturation, and luminance. You can do this uh, also in Photoshop and GIMP. And I do find it much easier to do in Photoshop, but we're going to play with this in, in Astro Pixel Processor. And the one thing I'll mention is that this is a tool where you should go in and just play around, make small changes, uh, see what that looks like. If it looks good, keep it. If it doesn't, you can, you can always cross out, cancel it, undo it, etc. Um, so this is something that you should play with and, and try and get your stars to pop, your nebula, nebula, nebulae to pop, your galaxies to pop, whatever you're editing. So one thing I like doing here is selecting all as the, as the color picker and then selecting zero to background. So it selects everything from zero to the background value, which is at 0 0.05. Um, and I'm going to change the saturation down all the way to zero. And what that will do is it'll remove a bunch of the colors from the background, and it'll make the galaxy or the nebula or the star cluster or whatever I'm editing pop more. So if I do calculate current adjustments, if you keep an eye on the screen here, you'll see that that the nebulosity around um, the Pleiades just popped, right? Because the colors in the background kind of dimmed out, so it it allowed the nebulosity to pop more. So that's one thing I do. And I was to keep current adjustments um, just to make sure. Uh, another thing that I would normally do is to do green and then remove everything from zero to background. But there's no, just not going to be anything green in the background of this, uh, of this image. We can make the blue pop. So I'll select blue. Background is zero. 50% is good. And click on this. And then you can do like right arrow a couple times. And then do show color selection. And then it shows you everything white is what's being what's going to be edited. So I'll do show current image. And then I'm just going to pop the saturation up to 20 to calculate current adjustments. And it, it makes the blue a little bit more prominent. Um, you can also do the same thing with cyan. There you go. And then calculate current adjustments. There's some cyan like around here. You can see that it looks more blue, looks a little bit more natural, more of what we're used to. So I'll do keep current adjustments. Again, make small changes if you like it, keep it. If you don't, undo it, uh, and then and then carry on. So while you're here, what you may want to do is click on the saturation checkbox here on the right side, and it'll show you the uh, a better saturation model that we'll eventually export. So this looks good. You can see that there's a lot more color around the stars around it. And I think this looks really good. Um, there are some like green and magenta fringing around these stars, but I think it looks cool. It's something I wouldn't mind exporting and sharing uh, as is. But if that bothers you, what you can do is you can click on the magenta or the green uh, and then either decrease the saturation or in the other sliders go in the opposite direction. So for example, in the magenta here, in the green magenta slider here, if I go like, I'll say 40% towards green and do calculate current adjustments, you'll see that a little bit of the purple has gone away and, but not enough that, you know, it looks a lot less colorful. So 
I think this looks pretty good, so I'll do keep current adjustments. And then you can do the same thing with the green. So there's like green here, you can move it towards the magenta a little bit to calculate current adjustments. And there you go. So I think I think it's more yellow, not green. But again, this is what I'm talking about. Like you have to play with your image and see what you can get just by adjusting little values here and there undoing if it doesn't make sense if it doesn't look good um, and keeping it if it does look good so like if you zoom in all the way i can see that it's it is yellow so i'd probably have to go to yellow and change those but for the purposes of this how to i won't so i'm just going to keep it as is i'll do keep current adjustments uh, and then save and it'll ask me for a name so crop cbg sc for uh, star color press ok it's not star color, I got that wrong, but I'll, I'll I'll see it in a little bit. And again, I wish that APP had um, photometric color calibrations to make this a lot easier. And the other thing that I wish it did, it had was built-in noise reduction. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's quite a bit of noise. You can smooth it out. So this is the point where I would normally take it into Photoshop and, and make some edits. But for the purposes of this video, of this how-to, this is the end of... Uh, this tool here i won't i won't show you how i do things in photoshop although i'll show you a version of it at the end uh, when i do my usual montage so when you're here just click on cancel tool and then it'll show up in the list here so sc is selective color not star color so you open this and the last thing we're going to do is play with the stretch settings on this side um, normally for the stretch i usually like doing like 15 percent background three sigma zero base but again you should play with this and see what works for you so when i do that you'll you see that the nebula nebulosity around the pleiades popped a little bit more uh, and then i'll leave everything else as is um, i can play with the saturation a little bit i'll up the saturation to 25 it looks a lot more blue the colors of the stars around it looks more jewelly you know if, the, if that makes sense i can up the saturation threshold a little bit so that it kind of mutes some of the extra color it looks pretty good and the last thing you can do is some contrast i you don't i don't usually do more than like five percent just to make the just to make the nebulosity pop a little bit uh, that's too much uh you can you can adjust the speed of the sliders by clicking on like the three and four so the one more thing that you can do that I'm not going to show is star reducer. Uh, it's definitely not as good as Starnet Plus so Plus. If you want to get rid of the stars, you can use Starnet Plus Plus. Although it doesn't really make sense in the Pleiades because the star cluster is the object. The uh, nebulosity, I think, is uh, it's probably primary to a lot of people. But you know, without the stars, the nebulosity wouldn't be there at all. So I won't. I'll skip that in this video. And finally, uh, when we're done, you can click on save. And then we can export it as a 16-bit TIFF. So I'll just name it M45. So it shows up here as M45.TIFF. And this is what it looks like. And if we compare it to what we see in Cyrillic. So this is what came out of Cyrillic. Um, and then this is Cyrillic plus a little bit of color correction and a noise reduction in Photoshop. So you can see it's, it's a lot smoother. And this is finally, this is what came out of Astro Pixel Processor before I even take it into Photoshop. So at the end of my video, when I do my little montage of my uh, finished work, you'll see three versions of this. The first one will be this one. Uh, you can see that it came straight out of Astro Pixel Processor, loss of nebulosity, some of the flux nebula here, I think. And the second version will be, you know, I'll take it into Photoshop, do some noise reduction, some very basic noise reduction, nothing nothing huge, uh, and we'll see what that looks like. And then the third one, I'll do some star reduction uh, using um, astrophotography tools, also in Photoshop, and then we'll see what that looks like there. I think that should make the nebulosity pop a little bit more when a lot of these white star dots are uh, smaller. Um, so I won't show you how to do that. If there's enough interest, I'll do another video of that, but I think this video was long enough, and I think I covered everything I wanted to in AstroPixel Processor. So I hope this was a little bit helpful um and sh and where i showed you astrophysics processor in a future video i plan on doing a multi-session processing of in astrophysics processor as well as cyrillic so that you can look at the processing options in both of them and then and give it a go astrophysics processor does have a free trial i think it's 45 days so you can try it out uh, and see if you like it before you try it out uh, before you buy it
So if you have any questions about Astrophysics Processor, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, if you have questions on Cyril, you can ask that as well. So um, until next time, clear skies. Hello. Hello. Up here.